because you have an interesting story, and, and then cocaine. Uh, yeah, I try to do my best to do the Cliff Notes version here. Yeah. Um, been in the industry for a super long time. Uh, my wife and I moved out to New York City, lived out there for a good five years, um, experienced the industry out there, moved back here, and kind of was trying to figure out what we wanted to do after working in fine dining out here. And um, kind of a baby of the pandemic. Um, we had a lot of time to think, and we decided it was time to do our own thing. Um, and instead of going brick and mortar, we decided to go food truck, uh, food trailer specifically. Okay. Um, now your, your history, because I think it's important to put in context, drop some of the names of where you've worked. Uh, yeah, so in uh, New York City, I, live, I work at, um, with the Epicurean Group at Lapicio, Bartuzzi, and Delanima. These, these are some of the best restaurants in New York. So, huge shout out to Delanima. Um, and then moving back here, I was fortunate enough to become part of the Tavernetta team with Bobby, um, Lachlan, Justin, David, all those guys. And working at Tavernetta just really blew my mind and really gave me a level of experience that I'll always take on. For, yeah, forever. so that's, you have that as your base and then you put that into a food truck. That's why this place is the bomb. Yeah, um, it's definitely interesting trying to implement service and hospitality as well as um, doing the ingredients and uh, dishes really well, the best way we know how to, so it's really important to us. How would you describe your cuisine? Well, it's a little bit of a mix of us being first generation from immigrant parents. Um, we have a bit of a traditional upbringing, but growing up in America, we also had the American culture, so we didn't really have a traditional culture that we can call our own. Your family is from Vietnamese, yeah, yeah, so from Vietnam, um, and so the pho part is like, you know, homage to like the Vietnamese side. The rapidos part is kind of growing up in Denver, kind of like around a lot of the Latin culture, and then the king uh, is mostly being part of New York, um, understanding like there's just so many other different cuisines out there, and being out there and just being next to all t different types of walks of life. Um, we wanted it to be that way and we wanted our food truck to have that opportunity to not have just this one specific cuisine but a mixture of cuisines that have influenced our lives. Um, that chicken and rice is like a perfect example of that. Okay, let's throw this on the close-up camera over here, see if Graham can get that working today. Josh is not feeling well, so we got a substitute producer today. So if it, if it, if it doesn't go well for people who are watching on Facebook, TikTok and Instagram will be fine. It's Graham's fault. He's, he's doing great. <laughs> um, so tell us really like the deep, like yeah. how you make this. Because there's a lot of work that goes into this. For sure. Uh, so the influence is, a lot of it was going to the Halal Guys um, food truck off of 53rd and 6th Ave. Yeah, have you been to the store that they opened here now? Uh, not yet, it's on my not list. Yet. You know, I, I keep saying as soon as I have a day off. <laughs> Never gonna happen. Right, um, <laughs> but I hear they're doing great things out there. Um, that was really cool, you know, who, like, who would say you can wait around the block at three, four in the morning to order chicken and rice from a, from a, from a food cart? And um, the flavors and everything there was just so delicious. Every time we had people come visit us from town, we'd always take them there. Um, at home, we would cook like a uh, high knees chicken. So like the boiled chicken with like the ginger rice. And then uh, we liked both of them so much and we understood that each culture has their own version of chicken and rice. Yeah. We almost kind of like, influence the two together to create this. Uh, so our rice is jasmine rice with garlic and ginger. We do a little turmeric and a little chicken um, stock to make the rice. Mm -hmm. The mustard greens are part of that greens of freshness to add That's to the right, richness yeah. of there. It's mixed with um, garlic oil. And then on the top right there, I don't know if you can really see it, but that's our house made chili crisp or like what we like to call a tingly sauce. It's got lemongrass, Thai chilies, red chilies, Szechuan peppercorns, um, and then we have our lemongrass marinated chicken, and then our, uh, <laughs> the star almost is like the white sauce. So we made this white sauce very much um, influenced by the halal guy style, um, but we did a lot of different ingredients of instead of like the Middle Eastern um, spices and, and whatnot, we did a little more like Asian spices forward. and. The dish really comes together real, uh, all together really well. And you got the spice to kick it up. You got the white sauce to mellow it out. You got the greens to bring in that freshness. And then you just got, just got this like 
delicious bite like every single bite should be the same that's what we feel like mm. so is this like your signature this is yeah these these two are our staple okay. dishes right here let's go over to the bon mi yeah. somehow this is a bon mi but your own version of it so bon mi in uh heavy is a sandwich so huh. there's the the bun mi's that people are used to here are a lot of the other traditional ones with like the cuts or the barbecue pork or what have you that you go to the actual bun mi shops um we call them bun mi's because that's sandwiches to us okay um for us we made a version of pho in a sandwich form yeah explain that because we were trying to figure that out earlier yeah we're like we know what pho is we know what a bun mi is yeah and you're gonna take a bite and you're gonna be like ah Ah, all right. Let's see where to get her. Um, if we start with our brisket, um, we make our own pho spice rub, and we rub that with the brisket. We let it sit for at least about 24 hours, then we smoke it. After we smoke it, we cut it super thin like you would eat at a pho restaurant. Uh -huh. um, on the sandwich itself, we do a little bit of light mayo, English cucumbers, pickled red onion, and then on the other side, we have our version of barbecue sauce to play with the smoking of the meat. Um, it consists of like sriracha, hoisin, vinegar, chili powder, a lot of ingredients that you would usually use to make barbecue sauce itself. Hmm. Then the best part, the one thing that I'm most proud of is that we also cut our herbs fresh every day. So you've got shredded green onions, you've got cilantro, you've got Thai basil, and then uh, jalapeno matchsticks to give it that crunch. And then when you take a bite of it, you, you're like, there's not a bowl of fun in front of me, but there's <laughs> one in my hand. So, Interesting. yeah. But, but yet barbecue, it sort of sounds like a barbecue brisket sandwich. Yeah, so. but like, sort of like a by me, but sort of like a bowl of pho. Mm. It's fucking rapidos. Hey, hey, no cursing. No cursing <laughs> on the show. I forgot to pause, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the name's brilliant too, by the way. Who came up with that? Uh, you know, it, it just kind of came, I mean, we, I don't know. It just, one day was, to me, it was just like, this is something that it could work. It's a little weird. A lot of people are still kind of confused about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, that's kind of why we emphasize a lot on service and hospitality is people come up to our window and there's not a lot of dishes that people will recognize. And so we want to make sure that people feel comfortable asking questions or being like, just try this. You're going to like this. This is why. Uh, you have your schedule, I think, probably on like your Instagram. But if you know where you're going to be today, tomorrow, the next few days. Um, after this, we have service at Station 26, um, really over in Park Hill. Okay. Those guys are super great. And yeah. then Friday, we're up in uh, Broomfield at Four Noses Brewery. Yeah, great. Those guys are also super great. Um, this Saturday, unfortunately, we're doing a private event. Did you say unfortunately? unfortunately for, for, <laughs> uh, for, for, uh, for some people. Yeah. Um, and then every Sunday, we're down at Denver Beer Company off of Platt. Awesome. And so that's kind of um, the Thursday, Fridays at every other. And then Sundays, we're at Denver Beer Company. So you guys can, we're you know trying to cover all the bases to give everyone a chance to try us out. Is there uh, dreams in the future of a brick and mortar or being a food hall? Or? You know, not right now. Okay. We're, uh, we're, we're enjoying the ride. Um, obviously, there probably is, but, you know, we'll talk about it another time. I'm sure people want you to. I'm sure people Yeah, well, you know, they, like I said, we, we're, we're all over town every day of the week, so people give, give them a chance to, to come see us when, they, when we're close. So. All right. Yeah. Anything else before we go? No, man, I just wanted to say thanks to... Um, my wife, my family, my friends, uh, my team. Uh, everyone has been super supportive in the last 10 months of us doing this. And uh, we couldn't be more grateful and thankful for everyone's support. It just goes to show if you do it right, they will come out. They will find you. I hope so, man. I mean, uh, I just want to make good food, people to enjoy, and, um, and try to have fun while we're doing it. Where are you getting your bread from? That's good looking bread. I can't tell you that. You'll tell me later. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Long pleasure to meet you. Thank you, Larry. Thanks for having us. Uh, we will not have what's for lunch tomorrow, uh, so I will be going out to lunch. Uh, but everybody have a great weekend. We'll be back at it next week. I am going to try a bon mi. A fun bon me. bon mi. Let's eat. Ooh. Yeah. That's insane.